Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with today's workshop. Thank you for being here, for attending. Um, this workshop, we have folks in the room, and we also have folks who are online watching right now. So to all of these, those of you who are virtual, welcome. Um, today we're talking about the D2L upgrade to version 10.1. And this is um, a major version upgrade. Right now we're using version 9.4. And so when you go from a 9 to a 10, they think it's kind of a big deal. So um, what I wanted to do is just get into uh, what some of the changes are and give you a preview today, and then um, show you where to get more documentation as, as we build it, because we're sort of building it just in time. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jory Hadsel. I'm the Distance Learning Coordinator. Um, I wanted to share a couple of links with you here. The first is this first link, the documentation for faculty. This is where you'll go to find um, the tip sheet and some of the other um, videos and documentation that we'll post for you about what the changes are for D2L that are coming. Um, and then we're also recording this presentation, so if you miss something and you want to go back and review it, you can um, find this URL here. The, it's just the Distance Ed um, website, and we have a link to all of the videos that we produce here in the Cove, so you can find that video there as well. So we'll try in about 45 or 50 minutes to get through some, some of the um, more significant changes, and then we'll take questions as well. So if you have questions and you're in the room, um, go ahead and um, throw up a hand and we'll try to address those. If you're online and you have questions, you'll need to contact uh, me or contact our office and we'll help you get answers to those questions. Okay. So um, a little bit about version 10.1. The first um, major piece is that the interface is changed. And I'll show you what this looks like here in just a second. But it uses what's called a 960 pixel width. So you'll notice that your screen may be wide, but it's going to use only part of the screen. And um, part of that's a design um, consideration. The other piece is so that it's more friendly for mobile devices that typically have smaller screens. And it helps the users avoid having to scroll back and forth on those smaller screens. So you'll see that. Um, there are some changes to the way that the individual pages are aligned. So in the old version, things were sort of centered and buttons were kind of all over the place. Um, in 10.1, everything is pushed over to the left. Again, just for consistency and also to um, help with those mobile users so they don't have to, again, scroll across their screen. Um, they've standardized heading styles and colors. And again, you'll see some of this here in a moment. And then Hold the applause. The save and cancel buttons should now always be in the same place. <laughs> and if you used the earlier or the current version, um, sometimes it was on the right hand side, sometimes it was on the left hand side if you're trying to save, sometimes it was at the top, sometimes it was at the bottom. Those will now always be on the left. So that's kind of helpful. So um, again, here is the magic and glory of our current um, D2L version 9.4, and this is a sample course that I use um, for some, some training purposes. This is what the new one will look like. And we're playing with the artwork a little bit still, so that this top area might change a little bit. In term, you know, this font might get a little smaller, and the logo might change depending on what the powers that be decide between now and June 1st. Um, but it has some different elements, and the overall navigation has changed. So um, without jumping ahead of myself, let me go to the next slide. Yeah. How much of it can you edit the way that you can edit things now? Are there, the, is the, you know, that area, the course home, that six links, is that completely locked down or is it there stuff that you can edit? Yeah. So yeah, you're looking at um, these links here yes. in this lower red bar. Yeah. Those are all still course related links. You okay. have control over those. Okay. You do not have control over um, what's called the mini bar. We'll talk a little bit about the mini bar. It's not the mini bar in your hotel, it's the D2L mini bar. Um, and it floats across the top of the screen perpetually now. So that will always be there for your students. Um, one of the nice features is you don't have to go back to my home anymore to switch between courses. You can switch directly using um, the mini bar, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Um, they've also grouped alerts, reminders, and messages in some little icons that we'll look at, all in the mini bar. And then um, 
your logout and your personal settings are also in that mini bar. So they're always there. Um, let's take a look, little look at that. So out with the old, in with the new. Um, a much, I think, cleaner sort of look and uh, much more mobile friendly. So in that mini bar, these are some of the components of it. The course list is um, what you're seeing here. And it allows you to switch, you and students, to switch between courses. Um, you can search for a course if you have a lot of courses in your list. So you can search by the name of the course. Um, what we're seeing here is courses based on those were, that were last accessed, but there's also an A to Z um, listing. So you can toggle between those. Um, so that's kind of handy. Um, this next piece, these three little icons here are the messages, updates, and what's called chatter, um, which is a messaging thing. I don't want to really get into that right now, but basically um, anytime um, there are updates, for instance, students would get updates in the old updates widget, right, that would say um, you have 32 unread discussion messages, for example, um, or you have one unfinished exam or something like that. Those will now show up, and the little red dot that you're seeing there um, indicates that there is a new update, right? So as the students are going through your class, that mini bar will always be present there, and they'll see, okay, oops, something new popped up. I have something new to go look at now. Make sense? All right. Um, the third area on the mini bar is the um, personal settings area, and in all caps, I'm screaming this at you, log out, right? Especially for students that are using the computer labs. Um, the log out link is now there. They click on their name and they'll go to log out. And it's very similar to things like Facebook that students are already using. There's usually a little icon you click on with your name and then log out and your settings are all grouped that way. Um, so D2L has moved in that direction as well. So if they want to update their profile, change their notifications, you all know what the notifications are, right? Text messages or emails based on um, some different tools. Or manage their own account settings. They can do that from there. Questions so far? OK. All right, so sorry about the text heaviness of this slide, but I was going to forget something if I didn't put it all in there. So there are some changes to the calendar in D2L, and it's actually kind of grown up now. <laughs> if you used the calendar before, it was a little bit clunky, um, had some issues. We've put it through a year of therapy, and now it's come out as a full-fledged productive calendar. Um, and it wants to play along with other calendars that we use, such as Google Calendar, or um, you can export events from Outlook as an ICS file and import them into D2L. Why would you want to do that? Maybe you have a whole bunch of different course deadlines, and it's easier to build it in Outlook, and then plop those out into an ICS and pull them into the calendar. So less of the point and click sort of interface. Um, so that's an option for you. Students can also choose whether they want to only display events for your course or they want to see sort of everything for all their courses that they're in, right? That was a little bit of a hiccup before with that. Um, they can do that directly in the calendar. And I'm going to show you some visuals here in just a moment. Um, and then they can also subscribe to the calendar. And this is really cool. And this is something that I think your students will like because if you've built things into the calendar or they've added things to the calendar, they can subscribe outside of D2L, like using you know, an app on their phone or on their tablet or on their computer. And when you update that calendar, it'll update outside of D2L. They don't have to go log in and look at the calendar and see what's changed. Those will automatically flow outside of D2L. So let's take a little look at just a couple of quick screenshots here. Um, this is the calendar, again, um, cleaned up a little bit from how it looked before. You now see the, um, you know, some upcoming events down here. It's you know, a little revised look. And this calendar is also more ADA um, friendly than the old calendar, so that's important. This is um, what it looks like when you go into the calendar. So students have different views. They can see the agenda, day, week, month, list view. Um, it's pretty. Um, Self-explanatory here, I had to import different calendar events from an ICS or from a, a calendar feed somewhere. Um, and then they also have different calendars they can filter, right? So this is where if they wanted to see all of their class calendars sort of overlaid, they can do that or they can filter by class. Um, there's 
little subscribe button here so they can subscribe outside. It'll give them a link that they can then paste into their um, calendar program. And they can also add tasks um, here in the calendar. So kind of, kind of a nice uh, improvement, I think, overall. And this is, again, on the subscription piece, this is you know, where it gives them a little feed that they can paste in, um, like I mentioned before. Okay. This is probably the biggie. It's the content screen, the content outline. So again, this is sort of what we're used to looking at. Keeping in mind that D2L is trying to really simplify the navigation. So this is one of my favorite pages to pick apart because you have a layer of system navigation up here along the top, of course navigation here across the bottom. You have individual content areas here along the top left, and then you have, oops, what would be um, almost like tabs or, or different functions along the top. So there's just kind of a lot going on visually on this page. So um, this is what it's going to look like now. It's a little different, right? Um, couple things I'd point out about it. Number one is that um, by default, when students click on content now, they'll see this course overview. And that is, can be a statement, can be SLOs, it can be anything that you want to put in there that's going to pop up first when they click on content. Okay. Um, we've had some conversations, myself and my counterparts, about well, how would we use that, right? SLOs have come up as an option. Um, you can change that periodically too. So that might be sort of a what's going on this, here are the things you need to focus on this week kind of a thing. And it's already embedded in content. It's maybe not in news anymore, you know, different screen. Um, so that's an option. Um, but if you don't put anything in there, then it just won't appear, right? So that's actually kind of a nice feature too because I was thinking, oh man, now everybody's gonna have to go figure out what they're gonna put in that box. <laughs> But if you don't put anything in there, it'll just kind of skip past it and move to the table of contents, which more closely relates to what we have currently. Um, and we're going to um, actually go live with this in a minute, so you'll be able to see we kind of play around with it. But one nice thing is that this is drag and drop now. So if you want to reorder your content, you can just sort of grab onto this module and move it down move that up and grab things that are in one and move them to another. So it's going to save a lot of time and a lot of the clickety, clickety, clack, you know, <laughs> that we were doing before. Um, but having said that, right, it's, it, it's a little different with the menus and, and where you go to do things. So for example, here is a, um, a, a page, right, that we've created a file. It used to say create a new file. Um, so it's just a weekly overview. And to edit that now, instead of having the little pencil icon over here like we used to have and the um, you know, reorder and, and create a new module and topic and all that, it all lives under this little drop down menu, right? So in exchange for being able to drag and drop and move things around really easily, now you have to pay on the other end when you want to edit something by clicking to get to the edit icon, right? So there's an extra click there. But it's all contextual. Um, and changes based on, on what you're doing. So that wouldn't appear if I don't click on any of those, right? Correct. Yeah, I just clicked on it so you could see what it looks like. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Jory, how yes. similar will this be to what the students see? So there's the other change, right? Um, in the current version, you have managed content and then the content viewer, which is a pretty close approximation to what the students see. Um, D2L tells us, and you know, we're believing them because we don't have a choice, right? Um, they tell us that this is what the students see. So there's no differentiation anymore. Manage content and view content are the same. Yes? On the current D2L that we're using in the um, default page, there's a box that permits you to change roles from instructor to student. Has that gone by the wayside? That will still be there. That will still yes. be there. So we will be able to see what the students yeah. will be seeing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The diff I mean, the, essentially the difference is your students won't have the little handles. When I say handles, I mean these little, um, these little lines here that allow you to grab and move things around. 
they'll see all the content without some of the options that you have to be able to control it. Correct. So that's why I always go to a student view is because I'm like, wait, what do I have showing right now? Exactly. Um, let's see. Hidden, I'm um, glad you mentioned that. It's now called draft, okay. right? So you'll see some things on here that are draft. That means I'm seeing them and students aren't seeing them. And you can make things draft, publish them, then unpublish them and we'll go back to draft. Um, it's just a change in the, the terminology that they're using. And then, Dory, you yes. created like a student profile because even the view student version was slightly different than mm -hmm. what an actual, is that going to continue? Yes. So everyone um, should have a student, a separate student account that starts with S instead of W um, with your same ID number. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that's still there. We're not doing anything with those. Yeah. Um, let's see. Content. So there's, you'll notice there's a count of how many topics are within a particular module, right? So in this course, there are 51 different modules and topics. Um, and then for, I'm trying to scroll and realizing that it's not actually D2L, it's PowerPoint. <laughs> Sometimes we forget. So for example, week one, there are five items in there, right? Um, week two is five. Week three, there are three items. Um, so at a glance, your students can kind of see how dense one of those modules might be without clicking on it, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, there's also this, and I'm going to get the name of it wrong here, um, which is why I'm looking at my cheat sheet. But it basically, um, it's not on here. It allows you to set whether a student, when a student clicks on that, whether it counts it as completed. So that then when you go back to view the um, statistics for that student, you can see whether they've, quote, completed those items or not. And there's a setting to have it do it automatically, and then there's one to have them manually mark it as completed. So that's something else to kind of explore with, explore around with. Um, so this is, in a nutshell, the change to content. Is this overwhelming? Nobody's going to panic June 1st, right? We're all going to realize all of our stuff is still here. So we can still Nothing load the old courses with no problem? Correct. It's just when you copy it over, it'll look like this instead of with the old screen. Yep. So, Jerry, so should we wait to create the, the new shells or whatever we want to call it? Wait until after June 1st and then create the shells and then copy them over? Did I pay you to ask that question? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the, uh, what we're doing now is you can go in to the employee self-service and request your classes now, but they will not be created until June 1st. Um, so if you like to work ahead, we're kind of penalizing you a little bit, but it's with good intentions um, because we need, for everything to work right and the navigation and everything to be right, it needs to, the courses need to be created once we're on the new version. So you can request them now, but just know that they won't show up until June 1st. When the new version's there, your new courses will be there also. Should we export a copy right now just to save everything in case the transition's not flawless? <laughs> um, nothing is going to happen to your existing courses. So what you'll find actually is when you go into your old courses, they're going to, I need to think about this before I say it, for the most part they're going to look the same. The navigation will be the old navigation. Um, it'll just it'll still have the mini bar across the top, but your old um, nav bar template will be there. Um, all the content will still be there, and we do have everything backed up several times on multiple uh, redundant servers. So you could certainly export, but there's really not a need to do that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out, and I think I have a slide for this. Uh, we're going to skip this one because my video is not working. But part of what they've done with content, and this is a really nice thing for your students, is they've added what are called inline content viewers, which basically means if you post something that's one of these formats on the screen, right, a Word doc, um, a PowerPoint, a PDF, different image formats, those will load within D2L. Your students won't have to download them and then open them, right? So if you're doing PowerPoints or, or different documents you want them to read, it's just sort of a quicker thing for them. It'll just It'll just open right in the screen. They don't have to download it, and especially if they're in a computer lab on campus, you know, where did it go and how do I find it and, and all that. So the inline viewer is really a um, big benefit. 
Did you all, those of you in the room, get a copy of the um, cheat sheet, the tip sheet? Okay, good. Um, for those of you who are online, we'll put that at the um, faculty resources page URL that we showed you earlier. Okay. So, you guys want to play around a little bit? Should we, should we go into a live version? Question yeah. Before yeah. we go in there, on the handout, mm -hmm. it says, Discussions, new option to require a student compose a message before participating in a comment. What, like, what is that for? Sure. I mean, so on the, the tip sheet here, it's talking about, right, if you require a student to compose a message before they participate in a dis discussion topic, this actually solves an age-old problem with discussion boards, which is students, before they write their initial post, they'll go read everybody else's post, and then they'll sort of copycat somebody else's, right? This means they can't see everybody else's until they post something of their own first. Your students are going to hate this, okay? <laughs> But it is actually, um, I'm not sure if it's the default or not, okay. but it's definitely one of the settings you can, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll jump and show you that. Yeah? Managing files is, I replace a lot of files when I find an error and so on, and that works pretty flawlessly right now. Will that be the same? Basically, yeah, you'll have the little drop-down menu structure, but the, is the functionality should be the same. Upload, and then it looks for if it exists already, and then Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So this is really, I mean, it's a big facelift for D2L, I mean, and some new, nice new features, but, you know, everything that you've been using is, for the most part, big exception content, um, going to work the same way, right? Um, and then, yeah, actually, before we jump in, let me just make sure I covered everything on here. So we talked about the discussion board thing. Um, there's a, it's a little easier to get the data if you use the um, view progress link on discussion boards as to how many actual posts the student replied versus just c composed versus the replies, right? Because before it would just say they authored six messages. Well, you didn't know how many of those were a reply and how many were an original post. So that's broken out for you as well, too. Um, and then with the Dropbox, there are two closing dates. There's an end date and a due date, right? Because we have to make things more complicated. But it, really what it does is it allows you to have an end date I'm going to get these wrong. The due date is the like last day they can submit a file. The end date is when something's really due. No, you got it. Did I get it backwards? Yeah, I think you just said it backwards. Okay. Anyway, if somebody submits between the end date and the due date, it's going to be marked as late. So you can define a period of time that you want to accept late assignments or not, um, and still have it cut them off at the end of that. Make sense? Okay. And then, um, do you know if there are any things like, I think when we were, you and I were chatting at one point, yeah. like the journal, you said the journal might disappear. Do you know if there's anything that, any of those like widgets or anything that you, you know are disappearing off the top of your head? Um, the locker is probably going to go away. Okay. I don't know if anyone uses the locker. We don't make it a standard link on our template, but um, some of the other colleges do. And it's like a one megabyte storage space that students get. It's really not big enough to do much of anything with, so we just sort of didn't go there. Um, that's going away. Um, I, we're going to publish a more comprehensive list. Okay. Yeah. Off the top of my head, though, for the most part, the changes to that top nav bar, um, instead what you're going to see, and let me jump back a couple screens here. Sorry about this. Okay. So, for example, on this screen where we have the course links, this one that says SCC Resources, it has a little triangle next to it which indicates it's a drop-down menu, and it's called a link group. So you can now create groups of links for your students right off of the nav bar here. So things like the library, um, the student code of conduct, the student newspaper, all that stuff is going to be now under a single link on there called SCC Resources. So that is also a change. But Widget-wise, um, there's probably not a need to really have. I, I don't know whether you want the updates widget or not. Um, you know, is kind of debatable. Maybe at first, until your students get used to looking up in the mini bar for the updates, because um, it's going to be kind of duplicate. All right. Okay, so let's open a browser. Wait. Yes, and you you can ask your question while I'm doing this. In the 
on the home page, will there still be like a news area? Yes. Can you show me where it is? Yeah, it's right. In this example, it's, oh, it's right, right here. There. Okay. Yeah, this is that, that header that you can collapse and expand. Yeah. Um, can you move it to the bottom? Or does it have to be at the top? It can move. Yeah, and actually, you do have the power to move that, too. Um, just, oh, and that's just links that students, that instructors see, right? Yeah, yeah it's instructor only. Okay. So, uh, actually, Jim, if you could come back to me for just a second. Okay, all right, you can go back to the, um, thank you. So this is the my home, and again, some of the artwork might change a little bit, but this is essentially what it looks like. Um, I have lots of roles here, so that's why it's sort of given me all these different little boxes. One thing um, that we don't like, that we're trying to fix, and we've seen a, an example of where it's been fixed, but nobody has been able to track down how they did it yet, um, is did you notice your semesters disappeared off of your yeah. listing of my courses? Yeah. Right? It used to say like spring 2013 yeah. and whatnot. There, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll have that resolved by the time June 1st rolls around. But Otherwise, that's something. would it be one more massive list? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like you they want you to search. Years? They want you to search, no. right? I mean, oh my God. Yeah. no. Bear with us on that one. Um, so as good as a disappearance. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So here we go. I'm moving down my list. So this is that course that you just saw the screenshots for. Um, and this collapses, although there's a little issue in this particular case with me getting this one to collapse. So it's going to stay there. <laughs> it's funny, you know, when you go to a new version, everything that you've customized gets set back to the defaults. And so one of the things it did was default all of the widgets to where you couldn't collapse any of them. It's globally, and we've got to track that one down, too. So I want to collapse it, but I can't. Um, so here's you know news, and obviously this can be um, reordered. Um, but it's, it's essentially the same as it was, other than the, uh, the top of the screen here. Joy, when was the last time we had a major update at D2L? Do you remember? Yeah, it was so when we originally started with D2L here, we were on version 8, 8.1, I think it was, um, back in 2007 or 8. Um, we went to version 9 probably about two years ago. Okay. And so this one, we hope it lasts for a while because we have to redo all of our documentation, all the student help documentation, all of ours. So it's kind of a big, uh, big thing. So you said that we massively changed it, so there's no content manager now? Yeah, did you come in late? <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the thing, so right. you have to do that all on screen and that's... that's so, so there's no view content versus manage content anymore, okay. right? All of your content will be there, but it's, it's here yeah, in this new... But it's, this is really, it's not trivial at all. I agree. For me, I mean, majorly not trivial. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, right. So I'm I'm giving you the tour today. You know we're we're posting um, lots of documentation and and doing it as quickly as we can. Um, I just wanted to show you sort of the functionality. So here, uh, for example, is a, something that's in draft status. Right. I can toggle between draft and published. Um, it's hidden from students. I can click on it to collapse or expand it. And let me just collapse this one below it. And then I can just grab, well, I have to use the handle. I can reorder things that easily, right? So if I want to move these things around, you know. Um, so I actually think the functionality is pretty good. But you're right, Daniel, it is a change. So I, I want to create a whole new structure. I just insert a new folder. That, and so this is like it's, it's a week, so week is a folder then, or what, how do you? Right, so up here at the top here, um, da, 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 da. Hang on. Come, it's, it's actually over here on the left, I'm sorry, add a module, right? 
we could call this additional resources. Hit enter. Now I have a new module. Where is it? And it says what at the bottom of the list? Yeah. It went to the bottom. I could pop it up to the top. So you drag it up. And so that when you add that module, it becomes a module, not a sub module. So right. So I can also make it a sub module. Mm -hmm. okay. So now you see it's indented, so now it's a sub-module. Mm -hmm. right, okay. yep. um, and then to add content to it, you can actually drag and drop files from your desktop. Mm -hmm. So if you have you know, your file management done really well, you can just pop them right in here. Um, but think about how you title things, because <laughs> it'll grab those titles. Um, you, or you can just say new, and then this is where you would add a new document or a new link. Um, you can actually... This is kind of a change too. Like I can create a Dropbox from here now, which I couldn't do before. I'd have to go to the Dropbox, create it, and then link to it. Mm -hmm. Now I can just create one from here and say, okay, um, I want it to be called, you know, um, and orientation then you set quiz. The link in your content then? Right. Nice. You know, do by Monday. I don't know. could change the type of submission, you know, have some, just some different options here. I'm not sure if I can change the settings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so then when I go back to content and go back to, where did I put it? <laughs> there we go. It's under additional resources. Now there's a link to that um, Dropbox that I just created. And so when they click on Dropbox, it will appear there also, obviously? Yes. Correct. Yes, so if you click on Dropbox, now there's the orientation well, that's quiz. Really click. So the only place that you can create a drop, Dropbox, oh, you can create it there. You can create them here, too. You can okay. still do what you did before, okay. but it's just allowing you to use. Right. What they did is they took the content um, screen and what used to be the course builder, mm -hmm. and it's still there. They sort of, it's sort of a hybrid of the two. Okay. So you can drag and drop your content. You can just punch things in. But they are trying to allow you to create quizzes and Dropbox items, at least the placeholder for them. Because like, you know, you have to come back to Dropbox and refine the settings a little bit. Mm -hmm. But at least when you're in your content building stage, you can put those placeholders in there, okay. right? And then so come back and sort of refine. So you can also do quizzes as well? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my setup. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back here and I... Can you click on bookmarks? Sure. I have no bookmark topics. Bookmarks was a widget. Right. right. Um, so when students are viewing content, they can, um, let's see if I've got anything. I don't know if I even have anything in here we can look at, but um, let's take a look. They can click this bookmark icon here, mm -hmm. right, to bookmark. It says bookmark added successfully. Um, and then that way when they come back to content, they can see they have one bookmark. They click, ah. okay, well this isn't working. So is that for, <laughs> can instructors, Set bookmarks or the students set their own bookmarks? The bookmarks are personal to the user, right? So you can't bookmark things for your students, but they can bookmark things for and themselves. And they only sit in this class then? They don't exist, Correct. Do they exist across, like is there universal bookmarks? They're within this course. Okay. Yeah. Because hmm. yeah. I just had one of my instructors asking about, she was very confused as to like bookmarks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're individual to, okay. the, to the user. Okay. Um, let's see. So Dropbox, I mean, I, mean, I, can, I don't want to leave content if you guys aren't ready to do that because I want everyone to feel. One thing, see, also back to the, I like that content because I actually do keep my desk, on my desktop a D2L folder for mm -hmm. each course and I kind of arrange it. It's very, very structured. So basically what you're saying is I can take that structure and just drop it and it's all created for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because now it's a two-step process. Right. You create it all mm -hmm. and then you have the, the act of inputting and uploading and, and yeah, all upload that. Upload right. and then, but then you have to link it into that the content, so which is, that's gone away. Right, right, right. So I think workflow-wise, it should be a little more smooth. It's, again, just, and I'm still even like, wait a minute, where did I put that? What did I click on? You know, so it just takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, anything else on content that you want to see? Oh, let me show you real quickly while we're here. Um, this completion tracking thing. That's what I was trying to remember the, the verbiage of before. So um, 
in this course. I'm trying to remember if it's, a, I'm not sure if it's a global default. I'll have to check on that. But automatic completion tracking is set so that if my students come in and they click on something, it will tell me that they've read it. I mean, have they completed it? I don't know, right? Um, but in terms of the content, you can more easily measure what they've looked at and when they looked at it. Um, oh, and by the way, on that sub-module thing, um, you can add sub-modules at the bottom here from within the module, which would be probably a little easier than what I did, was kind of dragging it around. Um, so that's kind of cool, too. Anything else? Yes, One question. More thing, and I know you already went over this, but okay. just to review it. So you have all of your folders set up, or your, all of your weeks and folders where, within that and all that. Uh -huh. um, right now, what you can do is you can set a beginning date and an ending date, and it vanishes after the ending date, mm -hmm. both in the Dropbox section and in the content. You can still do that here. And I think you briefly covered it, but yes, no? You can. OK. Right here where it says Add Restrictions. OK. You can add a start date. A little calendar pops up. So we'll start something okay. today. Um, time, right? And, mm -hmm. um, an ending date. Okay. And then the due date as well. Okay. And that's under published. It's it's yeah right under it was underneath there yeah so okay. like if I say update it'll it should pop back. Okay. Yeah. So now actually it's telling me right here too, which is kind of nice. You used to have to sort of hover to mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I can just click back on that if I want to change it, and then change those. Can I ask you something that's kind of jumping way ahead? Sure. Are, is there going to be summer support for this? Summer support. So, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, is it at your house? <laughs> yeah. Does it yeah. involve your kids? I know, right? <laughs> I yeah. babysitting exchanges. Are <laughs> um, yes, we we will have phone support. Okay. You gonna um, use your cell phone number? No. <laughs> no. No cell phones. Um, we do have somebody, um, Tracy Valverde, will be here to take phone calls and log things. I'll be working through um, the first week of summer school, okay. um, personally, and then um, in and out throughout the summer. Um, and our um, academic computing lab folks will be up to speed to help be able to help students with this. Um, and did you have a hand up? You wanted to throw something in? Is there a class that students can take to learn <laughs> how to use this? Yes. So if, stu if you have students that are Going into D2L for the first time, um, it's in our department. It's Learning, Tutoring, and Academic Technologies. It's LTAT um, 330, which is D2L familiarization. And actually, I'm teaching that in the fall. Um, and what we're doing this time is um, on the second Saturday of fall. So not that weird first Saturday before most classes have really started, but the, actually the, the real first Saturday is kind of what I call it. Um, we'll have a three-hour hands-on workshop, and then the remainder of the course. It's only a nine-hour course. Will there still be that, be online. that course that students, that free course that students can enroll in, but yes. it'll be with the new? Yes, there is also the free sample class, um, which you can get to from my home. We're, at, we're in the process of updating that, and I'm not sure how robust that's going to be for summer, okay. um, but for, for sure um, by fall that will be, um, that will be there. Do we have that in here yet? No, this is the student help site. They can get there um, mm -hmm. from here. The, the little link usually pops up, and it's in the news over here. I think maybe I minimized that. Oh, here we go. The D2L sample class, yeah. So we'll update that as so well. this is like a video thing? It's a self-paced um, class. It takes students about 30 minutes, but it um, walks them through all the different areas of D2L, and at the end, it gives them a certificate that they can print out or email. And um, it's actually a really good activity to do during an orientation or to require during the first week. Um, and then if they already have a certificate, they sort of don't have to do it because they've been through it before. Um, although maybe we'll change our certificate a little bit so that it'll say the new version or, or something like that, because um, that wouldn't be a bad thing to have your students do. Okay, Question. so from June 1st through 8th then, you and Tracy will be the only two people available here at City College to assist us if Thank we you. run into problems. Yeah. I'll, yes, um, I'll actually be here the week of the 10th also. Um, so if you're looking for me, I'll be around. 
Um, well, I'm the, more concerned about the first or the eighth than I am the yeah, tenth, because yeah. by the tenth, it's kind of a done right. deal. So right. The help desk is also available, mm -hmm. um, and you know we're. What sort about of, ARC? Will they have people too in their IT department or distance? That's always a good option. Yeah, okay. check with them. And just in case we can't sure. reach you or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. and they have two um, coordinators over there, so okay. they're probably they'll have, probably have a little more coverage. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So, August. Thank you. August. Let's see. Um, let's see. Not a lot else that's that's tremendously different. Again, you know, you're going to see these drop downs, right? Um, in quizzes. Let's edit the quiz. So the property screen, you can see now everything's left justified. Again, remember we talked about that. Um, so you have your same option to set your category and you know, link it to a grade item and all that good stuff. The auto export to grades and the automatic grade are sort of separated. Right now they're right next to each other. So make sure that if you want it to auto grade, you check this one. And if you want those grades to actually go to the grade book, you check this one. Um, and I'm trying to think of what's changed here. It's just a, it's a longer kind of scroll through here because they've left, left justified um, everything. I have a question, and I'm, I can't remember where it turns up, but there was yeah. some place in almost everything, almost everywhere in D2L, you set dates by clicking on, I think, restrictions. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there was some place that might have been in discussions where it was not in there and you had, it, uh, I should just ask you to come by and see you. I was just okay. wondering if they happened to fix that because I thought that was sort of. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what, which, sorry. <laughs> sorry. My internal Google isn't producing any. Oh, and then the results. other thing is with the, the grades, uh, I had to show, I had to go in and set it so that the total, gro total grade was on that was displayed. Yeah, let's ch let's take a look at that because that is, I, I know exactly what you're talking about with that one. Um, real quickly before we go there, just to kind of walk through these tabs here with quizzes. Um, again, you know your availability is here, release conditions. Um, I think it might have been in discussions. Though, okay. The fact that yeah. the, the date was different in discussions than yeah. anywhere else. Not m nothing. Not much has really changed okay. here. Okay. It seems like there was something. Once you get to, now if you do a lot of quiz stuff, um, one area that, that is actually the same is once you go to your question library or change your questions, you're back into the same, same old thing. You notice we lost the 960 pixels and went full screen again. Um, this is virtually untouched, from what we can tell. So if you work with that a lot, it's you don't have to deal with that on top of the other changes. Um, let me show you about the um, grades. grades, yeah. So in grades, what you had to do before was um, for the final calculated grade to actually, they call it final calculated grade, but just for the calculated grade to show at the top for the students, you had to click on the little grading icon um, and release that. Let's see if that's still the case. does look like you have to do that. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of a just, I don't know why you, they wouldn't just calculate, you know, by default. Mm -hmm. um, but you do still have to do that. And discussions. Discussions. Let's head over there real quickly. And I want to show you where that little setting is to make it so they can't see the discussion board until they post to it. Um, let's see. So again, your, you know, wh where your little icons used to be over here, they're once again in these little um, drop-down menus. You can edit, assess, or view just like you could before. So we'll edit. Um, and I hope you can see this. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger for you. And it's this one right here. A user must compose a message before participating in the topic. You can always click the little question mark. Require them to compose a new message before viewing or replying to other messages. So again, if you give a 
you know, sort of midweek deadline for that first post. They can't get the other points without doing this one. So, Jory, on yeah. the current um, D2L discussions mm -hmm. under topics, there are three icons on the right. There's a uh, like a bar graph mm -hmm. icon. Oh, and there's two. I think there's two others. I use the bar graph icon to get statistics, and I'm wondering. I think they're probably think these they're three, the same? same three, yeah. Oh, they look the, okay, they yep. look the same. Okay, I got it. Yep. They just have the clumped verbiage, them. Yeah, the verbiage I wasn't familiar with, but I don't often read it. I just look for that. Right. We all know to look for the pencil or the right. ruler, right? right. Yeah. Fine. Thank goodness they kept those. Where's that, that pencil? Really... <laughs> yeah. Joy, I know. That pencil? I know, and, and if you're like me, your first inclination is to click here, right? Which, of course, takes you to the actual <laughs> messages. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go back, and then you edit. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the thing that like, and then go up to restrictions on, and go up to restrict the restrictions tab for the discussion board. Yeah, so everywhere else right. in D2L, the restrictions is date related. In right. here, they put the it in the properties. They put it in and properties. Then, yeah. So it's, just wondering yeah. if that. We'll feed that one up the, the up the line <laughs> to our rep. Yeah, that would have been a nice um, consistency. And do you guys know about managed dates? If you haven't used managed dates, it's pretty handy. So I'll just, a little nugget you can walk away with today. Um, this is a value added workshop. So if you go to edit course, actually this is kind of nice. The course, edit course is now grouped um, sort of by, you can have it grouped by category or by name for what you're trying to do. So if you just want it alpha, right, you can click name. Mm -hmm. If you want sort of category oriented, then, then you can look at it this way. Um, there's this little tool called manage dates on it open and so it gives you a list of all the dates that you've entered for date restrictions mm -hmm. and what's really nice is you can offset those dates so if you know um, for example let's just pick something here let's say offset the dates let's say okay do you want to offset both the start or end date and you can push them forward or backward. So let's say it's the spring semester and you know the semester started on the 18th of January and then you're coming back for the following spring and it's going to start on the 16th. Mm -hmm. You can just push all those dates back two days and you don't have to go through and yeah. edit them all individually. So it's a way to roll all your dates forward or backward um, by a certain number. Or you can do this other calculation thing. There's a little tip for you for today. That's in the current version, but um, I, think, I think it's so handy I just had to mention it. And where is it again? My, so edit the, course. Edit course, that's yep. right. Okay. Is that that? We lost our course navigation. There we go. Yeah, it's an edit course. So that is um, mostly what I had to cover. I want to give you a couple other little tidbits before we leave here, so just bear with me. Um, and that is we are rapidly developing um, different tutorials in different, both written and video um, format. They will be posted very, very soon um, at this link on the, the DE Cove website for faculty resources. Is that link also on the D2L front page? Um, it will be. Okay. Huh. Yeah, actually we, act yeah, yeah, act yeah, no, actually we tried to have that changed several months ago and it never sort of happened. Okay. So. Um, if it's not there soon, it will be there for sure on June 1. Because um, that's the other thing. The, um, we're redesigning the login page for D2L, that main login page. So it's going to have less sort of dense information, um, still targeted mostly towards students you know, for the links that they need. But it's going to have a new look, too. So when you, before you even log in, you'll see this wonderful, clean, mobile, friendly, responsive page there. Um, some important dates to keep in mind. Um, the May 29th through 31st, each well will be totally unavailable. Sh shut down, It'll, they'll be deleting old, old stuff, um, upgrading it, doing maintenance. And then June 1st, um, your courses will be, cre they should be created by June 1st because course creation is part of what they're doing while it's shut down. Um, and so June 1st, your courses for spring and fall will be available. Um, and the phone will start ringing <laughs> on this end. 
Um, just a shameless plug for the Innovate conference. Anybody here planning to go to Innovate? Good, we're gonna have two full days of lots of things, but we have a trainer from D2L coming out doing workshop all day, both days. So um, if you're feeling like you need a little extra primer on this, they'll be training in this new version for us on those Do you have the schedule yet? <laughs> um, yesterday they told, no, today's Wednesday. Monday they told me it was gonna be up by, t by yesterday and I haven't looked. Okay. So the full schedule should be up so by like now. So like knowing exactly when Yes, that, okay. yes, of all the sessions. Okay. Yeah, we have some insane number of sessions going on. Yes? My last course that I taught online on D2L was fall 2010. So that's been almost three years. And you just said that you're going to be deleting a lot of things. Will my course still be, will the courses still be there? <laughs> fall 2010. If I was thinking about importing that into the new one for the next semester, you know, and then making changes and all. Yeah. I want to make sure it's still going to be. So the right. courses go back three years. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I would, um, we'll put, I'll send out a notice about this too, mm -hmm. uh, specifically which courses are being deleted. But if I were you, I would create a development course and just copy it, everything into that course. Which I have got. Or export it. Okay. Yeah. Or export it to a zip file and keep it locally. Okay. Yeah. Your development courses will not be deleted. It's just the semester specific ones. So I've never opened those before. Exported a complete course. Is there a video somewhere showing? And then, and then, can, so you export it exists as a zip file, I take it. And then there's in D2L, there's a, is it? There's just something that will you can click on and it'll walk you through the. I mean, zip file. Yeah. It's pretty easy. It's the use. it's the same screen that you're copying from. It's okay. import, export, copy. Okay. So it'll just at, you just choose export instead of copy. And then it'll ask you the same way that you would copy. What do you want to export? So do you need to blow out the zip file to the individual pieces before you try to import it again? Or will it? No. Oh, OK. Yeah, so, so it'll export it as a zip. You yeah. just keep that and then put it back in as okay. a zip. Now I'll tell you that the copy keeps more than the zip does. Right? There are some settings and stuff that won't save in your zip file. OK. Um, but if, you, if your main goal is to keep your content, and it'll keep the organization of the content and stuff. But there's just some little settings that it just doesn't keep. Okay. So either way would be a good way to go. And um, help resources, again, there's our phone number. You can always email me and um, the help desk as well. Okay. More questions before we wrap up? I'll hang around and answer questions and we can play a little bit for those of you in the room. But I wanted to make sure that hopefully you're going to leave here with less apprehension than you came with. I hope. Okay. <laughs> if not, um, we'll be holding daily therapy sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But I think once you can actually touch it and, and sort of work in it, um, that, that apprehension level should go down. Okay. All right. Thank you.